Hey, John, give me a couple more beers, huh? <laughs> if you excuse me, I'm gonna go park the car out in the yard. I didn't come all this way just to quit. Somebody's gotta be here to see what's going on. I want the truth told for them. They're just kids. You're gonna find out it's a lot harder to get out of a war than it is to get into one. I'm trying to show them that somebody back home is still behind them. You got a good heart, Chicky. It's your brains I'm worried about. All right, atrocious Bostonian accent aside, we have uh, the greatest beer run ever. So funny story about this, I was going to make this the first ever mystery movie review, but I figured that nobody would fucking click on it because I'm not anywhere near popular enough to garner views based on pure good faith. <laughs> Regal, in their infinite uh, creativity since Cinemark kind of filed for bankruptcy, <laughs> They're trying new things, trying to bring more income, revenue, spice things up. And I gotta tell you, I, if it's like this, this was actually pretty fun. They did a mystery movie Monday. So for only six schmackos, you can go see a mystery movie, which they gave you like the runtime, the rating and all that. But they were like, it's a mystery movie and it's a pre-release. Now I would have had this review out days ago, but depression creates, uh, how do you say this? A lack of motivation. Seeing this movie in, in a mysterious context of not even, I hadn't even seen a trailer. They're, they didn't even give you a, a, a credit or title sequence when this movie started. It just started happening. And I gotta tell you, it was a little bit refreshing going into a movie completely, utterly blind and actually having a really good time. So Greatest Beer Run Ever is directed by Peter Farrelly, who has a very large filmography. Most recently, aside from this film, he actually directed Green Book, which I believe not only garnered several Oscar nominations, I think it won for some categories. And funny enough, if you go far enough, I far enough back, I think his directorial debut way back in the day was Dumb and Dumber. So this guy has done everything from stupid, dumb, slapstick comedy to really emotional, intense, dramatic pieces involving race relations and humanity. <laughs> and this movie's no exception. If you didn't know, Greatest Beer and Ever stars Zac Efron. We're not gonna go into his filmography because he's a household name. It, it's Zac Efron. He plays Chicky from, Bo from Boston. From Boston? 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 I it's funny, on the poster it shows the other star, which I guess this would be the other, like, in terms of the protagonists, he's on screen the second most amount of time, but but Russell Crowe's in this, so that's cool. I like me some Russell Crowe, you know? But yeah, the, the entire premise, as I slowly learned over the course of this mystery movie unfolding, is that this guy, Zac Efron's character, Chicky, lives in, in Boston, in Boston, with all of his pals and whatnot, and he's kind of a, you know, he's kind of a, a loser, just who drinks and lounges about and doesn't really have any responsibilities. A typical schmuck, right? Next thing you know, he's at the bar with his fellas between his sister protesting about the Vietnam War and his fellas talking about all the boys from their neighborhood that have gone over. They're like, oh, what What can we do? And him in a drunken stupor, he's like, I go over there and I bring them all a beer. I bring them all a fucking beer and they have a good old, they remember that all of us back in the neighborhood were looking out for him. We're, we're, we miss him. So they call him on his bluff and then he's like, nah, fuck you. I'm going to, I'm going to Vietnam. And then sure enough, he, it gets to a point where he's like, well, now they're all gonna, everybody's gonna think I'm an asshole. And like, both parents and friends are like, you know, oh, say hi to my son and shit. So he's like, well, I guess I'm going in um with a literal duffel bag full of beer. And that's the whole movie. By the end of the movie, I really enjoyed this movie. Cri critics, I mean, people not as much. Critics ripped this to shreds. I think the critics are on some bullshit <laughs> at, the, at the end of the summer season. They got the seasonal depression. First they shred, don't worry, darling. And now they're like, oh, this was a, this was a stupid and silly, uh, Zac Efron plays a bumbling buffoon and I used to can't be, it's like, no, this, this is, maybe I'm just fucking on some, go-go juice or something but i actually had a really good time with this movie so funny enough this is based on actual like a real story i don't know how much of it is real how much of it's dramatized as futurama says war is the h word so i believe that most of the fucked up shit that happens in this that zach's character chicky sees probably went down there's even uh they even show like the real pictures by the end of this and I, there's interviews you can find online with the actual 
the actual kind of the boys basically and their exploits and they confirm the story happened it's for this to be the premise i mean it's a cool story i i think it's an interesting story it's a funny story and it takes a serious turn that ends up actually meaning more than just oh you know ah ha ha be a run it's like no this is also kind of a, a delving into the the politics of the Vietnam War and how it affected people and kind of how fucked up it was in general. And I thought Zach, Zach's character was, in, was uh, throughout the entirety of it, like he was never annoying. I mean, was he a little bit much at the beginning? You can make an argument for that, but I think he was endearing. Sure, he was a bit of a slacker, but there was never any malice. There was never any ill intent. And so he had positive intent with his suggestion of going to bring beer. And then in doing so, there's actually like, I thought it was going to be kind of like, oh, he's kind of just bumbling his way through. But no, when we get to the about halfway point, shit starts getting pretty serious. He finally realizes, oh, I'm in Nam. I'm in Nam during the Vietnam War. And then we at home, or in this case in the theater, are like, yeah, this shit, this is... This isn't just a comedy. This is people dying and people at home worrying about them. Kids not coming home to see mom and pa. I think the movie overall is pretty funny. In some moments, it's really funny. Just given the there's organic comedy that kind of comes from these ridiculous situations. Zach's, I mean, Zach's delivery with a lot of lines is good. A lot of the situational comedy some some of the situations are so ridiculous they're funny but it's not like too stupid some of the i saw some of the criticism was saying that it was like too bumbling buffoon slapstick no i just think that's his character and then eventually he grows out of that over the course of this film and he has a character arc and that's what i'm here for i'm glad that it happened he didn't just wasn't just ooey the whole time like he got to a point where it's like oh that man is shell shocked and scarred there's trauma i'm just now we have an actual character, a layered character. And it also did something very interesting. So this whole this whole film is like an Apple movie, Apple original exclusive, whatever you want to call it. Coming into this, you would think, oh, they're going to approach this from a liberal perspective, kind of, you know, oh, war is bad and that's it. But like, they did a pretty good job, I think, of balancing pain, respect, and homage to those who served, you know, like that that these are just these are citizens of the country like i have my own thoughts about you know war and the military but like oh at the end of the day these guys back then and they had to fight for their lives and they were fighting for them not only themselves but everybody that was back at home they i mean whether they knew what was actually going on or where they were being directed they were just following orders and so it does a good job of paying respect to those who served bravely and dutifully but also shining that flashlight on the shitstorm that was the Vietnam War. I'm no historian, I'm not really qualified to speak too much on the subject, but I think we can all agree, Vietnam was fucked. And whether you think one side was innocent or the other, whether you believe in either conspiracies or the undercover shit that either government was doing, a lot of that type of stuff went down, or seemingly so. So I mean, <laughs> so all that considered, the movie did a good job with acknowledging both aspects of that of that whole dynamic. Now the movie isn't perfect. I think the first act takes a little bit to get going. Some line delivery is a little bit weird. Not every single Bostonian in this is like a top of the line actor. Some commentary throughout, not the entire film, but here and there in the beginning, some of the commentary is a little bit on the nose and the, most of the movie handles it pretty well, but I, I think aspects of the first act kind of lack subtlety. And I mean, even he's a little bit cheesy when he returns home and there's like a line he has where it's like a little less drinking, a little more thinking. And it's just like, you know, is it a little bit cheesy? Sure, but like, I wasn't mad at it. I was like, yeah, you, good, good for you, man, good for you. But uh, but yeah, first act is a little, little bit rough. But I mean, overall, I don't have too much to say one way or the other. I think I'm a little bit biased, funny enough, not that I love Zac Efron or anything, but I, I'm, I'm biased because the situation in which I got to watch and experience this film i enjoyed so much so often especially in my line of work <laughs> work so often in my line of work i'm already seeing all the movies right my motto is i watch all the movies so you don't have to in seeing all these movies especially if i'm going to the theater which i always am i see the same trailers again and again don't worry darling was a perfect example i saw the trailer for that film no less than 20 times to a point where I memorized it unintentionally and I was just like oh my god let me see the fucking movie and that's so much of what it is right a movie's announced here's the premiere trailer and now we're gonna see that trailer 
20, 30 times in the marketing for it and clips from it and they're going to possibly spoil the movie and then you're going to have the movie actually premiere and you're going to go in and you already know what to expect. I mean, critic reviews have already dropped. You kind of know what to expect. You know, who's going to be in it. You know what it's going to be about. You know what, you have all these preset expectations that you can't help but be inherently biased. So it's just really refreshing to go into a theater and just go in and be like, okay, I have no idea what's about to happen. Movie starts playing, and as you're going, you're like discovering the plot with the characters. You're figuring it out, especially if there's no fucking title sequence at the beginning, you're just in for the ride. By a certain point in act one, you're like, all right, this is the kind of movie we're in for, here we go. And then you enjoy that ride. And that was that's what I liked a lot about this. And I mean, I, I like to think that if it was a shitty movie, I would have not liked it, but I think this was a really good movie. I think it's really good, and I think that the fact that I got to experience it also in this added context of not knowing what the hell I was getting into and getting a cool pre-release of this, like, solid, solid time. And though it may not be perfect for all these reasons and possibly more, I think it's safe to say that I would give the greatest beer run ever a surprisingly solid 4 out of 5. I do not... I, look, I have hot takes in my life. I don't often agree with critics, and I don't know what the audience consensus is for this movie yet. There isn't one. This movie is coming out, if I uploaded this correctly, uh, today, so I don't even know what people think about it. And I think this movie is actually really good. If you disagree, I completely understand, but it was a cool mystery movie, it was a fun experience, and I gotta say, I if I had seen the trailer for it and then gone in, I, I think I would have liked it more than I thought I would have. So, overall, good time. I can't say see this in theaters because I don't think it's getting a theatrical release, but if you have Apple TV, watch it, it's worth your time. Watch this, and Coda, you'll be in for a good weekend. Anyway, it's all I gotta say about Greatest beer run ever. Stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie review I do. And goodbye, travelers.